We're out here day after the tournament. John's on the front right now, cruising around, looking for some spawners. And uh, we're just kind of gonna walk through how he won this derby. Uh, we're gonna find some fish up shallow. We're gonna try to catch a few off the beds. John's gonna show us a few little details that he used to win the, tur the tournament. And uh, then we're gonna maybe look in the dirty water and uh, find out how he switched up strategies on the final day to carry that title home back to Florida, right? Yeah. Sound good? Let's find a couple. I watched it like bite like crazy today. That'd be, that'd be nuts. Yep. Oh, there's oh, a yeah. big one. No, it's that same one with the lump on its head. Oh, old, old scar head. Yeah. It's still a good one. That's three pounder. Oh, it's short of that. Dude, half them fish. Although, I, half them fish had to work for over an hour. <laughs> no we kidding. We ain't got time for that kind of crap. <laughs> Catch the easy ones. Yeah, they, it was awful. Yeah, just don't don't move it at all. Just let it get in there. First. You'd let it fall down. Yeah, you want to let it get in the bed. You don't want to move it or anything. And then let's see that, that fish is over there to the left. I think. Yeah, I think you're right. It's on to me. Yeah, he's right on. It. It's kind of barely mounted. Yeah, what am I doing wrong? Looks good to me. Yeah, just let it sink down in there. And then we're gonna wait and see what, what that fish does. And... I suppose you come across one and it say it's sitting on the bed, mm -hmm. and you flip in there. The, will the fish kind of tell you right away how quick it's gonna bite based on what it does when the bait gets in there? You know, usually you think you can tell that. Usually you can be like, oh, that's gonna be an easy one. That one's just sitting there. But this week, so they were some of the hardest fish to catch for me anyway. Oh, no I kidding. I would go buy one and I'd be like, oh, I got that one in one throw. And I'd, I'd be there for an hour working that fish, <laughs> you know. And then there was other ones where I was like, there's no way I'm going to catch that fish. And I'd pull up and pitch on it and she'd come right over and eat it. So it was just, it was really, they were really unpredictable this week. But typically you can go by and if that fish stays there, you can catch it, you know. Yeah. Let's see, and then usually I'll make a few throws like that, and then I'll. And ease if nothing up. happens, yeah, I'll ease up and kind of just you know look at you know see what's going right on. There, right there. Where'd it go? I lost I it. Know. I thought it came off the bottom side of that spot. Oh, I got it. Uh oh, uh oh. Just blind casting out out in the middle of the pockets. I caught some good ones that way this week too. It's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> And the luck keeps going. Oh yeah. I'd help you, but I mean, you're kind of a pro, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it was all week. I mean, you'd have to fight these fish forever. Big old skinny thing. Yeah, already, already spawned. And they're probably still guarding fry. Heck yeah, oh. man. Choked it. That's how it went all Choked week. it. <laughs> now, were most of the ones you caught just blind casting, were they post spawn I, like this? I yeah, mean, pretty skinny? Yeah, the, the biggest one I caught was blind casting. And, uh, you know, it was just a big giant, <laughs> giant one, you know. Old raggedy looking yeah. thing. Man, it ate it. Oh yeah, he swallowed it. There you go. See how easy it is? <laughs> Wait, shake it. Oh, he can't. He started coming out of that That's dark good, spot. We need yeah, more yeah. Video on the GoPro. <laughs> Way to shake him off. I did that. You did that intentionally. This one seems. This is the one you want to find. This is the yeah. more aggressive. Pull in, drop it on it, and eats it. Go to the next one. Oh no. We got that stick on the bottom. <laughs> is it hung? 
Yeah, but he's looking at it. <laughs> oh, oh, he, he, oh, he got him! Oh! Oh! Off the stick! Off the, he pulled it off. You were oh. hung up, and he went and unhung it for you. He even helped me out. All right. You get him. No, you get him. Third time's charm? All right. But this is your last time that I'm going to Yeah, no, I'm, I, I fully admit the, the fail that occurred there. Shoot. There's so much gnarly junk in that there bed. There is a lot of gnarly stuff in there. I'm just going to move it. Yeah, that worked. All right, you get them. I made it easier for okay. you. That's really all Cle I did. Cleared it out for me. Yep, I set you up. And then that breeze comes back. <laughs> It looked like he flared on it once, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, probably had this had some weed on it. You know, when I throw it in there and I get it around where I think it's at or around near where the bed is, you know, I'll, I'll do a lot of times. Sometimes I'll do little shakes, you know, where I'm just kind of shaking the line. Other times I'll do bigger shakes, you know, where it's, it's actually moving the bait. Mm -hmm. And other times I'll just I'll pop it. So those you get are, it to those actually the, hop yeah, off those the are, bottom. Those are the three different ways I work it. And uh, there's the wind. <laughs> yeah, it never fails. We'll see. We'll let's see if that wind calms down a little bit. So I don't really know. Sometimes I'll, I'll try to work it slow at first because sometimes the hard pops will just spook them off and they'll. They won't they'll, come back? No. Uh -uh. Got him! <laughs> now see, look, that fish looked like he was like a six incher down there. Mm-hmm. And and he's a pound and a halfer. <laughs> a lot bigger. He's not than he even looked. bad. No. No, watch out! Oh, watch oh, out! Come on! Watch out! Come on! <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> There you go. Thumb but that back. was that was textbook, dude. That, that was, was that was perfect. That was that's these are that's the kind you're looking for. The mm -hmm. ones that when you throw in there and they react to it right away and they go right to it. And you catch sticks off their beds. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's all part of it. Now when you were getting into these pockets and you'd lob one out, um, like say you just threw into the back of this pocket blind. Yeah. Would you would you work it back to the boat or would you just kind of let it sit there and the whole time you're still looking for one on yeah, a bed. A lot of the time I, I was trolling motoring so fast is that by the time I went to move it a little bit, we were already up to it, you know? Yeah, there's another good one right there too. Really? Yeah, it just oh, slid yeah. off that log. Oh, where are you going? Oh, no, I don't even know if he's on a bed. I think it's just sitting there. Sometimes they'll just, when they get like this and they get stupid, they'll just eat it and drop it in front of them. Mm -hmm. Oh. He's not that stupid. Nope. <laughs> 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 nope. <laughs> Try one more time. Oh, he's coming to the boat. There's no little guy. Is that a crappie? Hell, you got some crappies. Yeah, he got some crappie up here. Oh, you're, you're, they're going to eat my Senko. That's not a, even a bad sized crappie. Is that thing really going to eat it? No. I bet, if it's a, I bet if it's mad enough, it would. Oh, that's where it's mad. Look, I'll let you catch all the big ones. I'm going to catch this little dink over here. <laughs> Confidence booster is really... Oh, no, it did not like that one bit. And there's kind of some nasty crap on the bottom. There is nasty crap. That's the problem with this place is that it's so hard to, like, Texas rig anything because of the slime on the bottom. Oh, uh, well, I was going to ask you because yeah. I, I saw that a lot this week on the water. Like, you'd, yeah. you'd get in areas and, you know, there'd be those little sticks in the water. Yeah. They'd have all that green slime stacked up on it. Yep. Yeah. Would you He's find more fish? Right there. Oh man. That is a big one. <laughs> Would you find more fish in those areas that were cleaner? Or did it not really make a difference? There's just so many up on the bank, they just kind of went wherever. Yeah, my, my fish were super random. That fish is super spooky. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, so I, I mine, I really didn't. That, this whole week I had absolutely no pattern. 
You know, it wasn't like, oh, you know, the, the only thing that would be a bit of a pattern was I stayed in the calmer banks. You know, I didn't really fish yeah. anything that had wind blowing on it. Um, you know, but I mean, besides that, it, it, you know, everything was just so random, you know, I mean, it just kind of went off what felt right, you know, and, and like if I drove by and I was like, that pocket looks really good, I'd pull in it and, mm -hmm. you know, and some of them I caught on points. I mean, some of them I'd go, all the way, you know, I'd go through the whole pocket, wouldn't see anything, would pull up on the point and, you know, there would be one sitting on a bed there. It just, what happened this, this tournament, it warmed up so fast that the fish just came, they spawned to the backs, they spawned in the middles, they spawned in the fronts. I mean, they were just, right. they were so scattered that first wave that came in, um, you know, it was just really hard to pattern what they were on. Well, and that was kind of the interesting thing is there were literally so many fish up. It wasn't like you had to find a certain type of, of bank or, a, you know, a certain portion of the lake. Mm -hmm. You could, you know, and I think that's why it probably played so well for you, the, mm -hmm. the sight fishing thing, because you could run new water completely blind and stumble across a whole bank of good ones yeah. anywhere, right? Yeah, because they were just pulling up everywhere. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what was going on. And I think when we did the radio or the uh, podcast, mm -hmm. we were talking about that and we were saying, you know, I think, you know, you asked me how it was going to be. And I, I thought it was going to be someone who, you know, I didn't think it was going to be one on a single spot like it has been in the past. Right, right. You know, I thought it was going to be a, a, a mixture of a couple of different spots. Did you ever run the same area? Because like this spot we're fishing here, you fished during the tournament. I did. Would you fish this multiple times I, I after didn't. catching fish off? I, I didn't. And I, what I noticed was I, I just, I heard a lot of other people saying fish were pulling up in their areas. Everywhere I went, if I went to it again, it, it, it seemed like it was just a waste of time. Okay. And that's like a five pounder fixing to eat my Cinco. Yes, it is. Here you get them. Here you get them. Throw in there. Oh, you're so nice. Oh, and then it swims off. Right. It's right. it was by that, there's like that little yeah, that's, stick, that's right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is going to be epic. Just get ready. I'm all, I'm all about epic. Oh, oh come on. Don't oh, do that. Oh, where are you fish? going? Yeah, why you got to be back. like that? John Cox throws his worm in there. I know. Things all about it. it. <laughs> no, no, he's just leaving. Yeah. He just went post spawn. He's done. <laughs> it's that quick. <laughs> it's that quick. It's over. <laughs> Well, okay, I mean, that's fine. I guess. Oh, he's coming back. Hold on. Now he's cool. Let's see. Come on. No, he don't like you. Here, we'll, let's go down a little bit and we'll turn around and come back. That's actually the male that was with the six pounder. Oh, yeah, because this is where it that's was, right? Red, yep. Yeah. I remember that little white chair up there. That's a big male. Yeah. Oh yeah. That this place had big males. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I weighed two females this entire tournament. Wow. That was it. All males. Pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Especially with like the amount of fish up cruising. I mean, it, I'd see some following guys around. You know, like what would look like a three or four pounder and. I just kind of assumed, like, I don't know, I figured they were mostly females, but that's kind of interesting that mm -hmm. you caught so many males. Yeah, there's big males in here. A lot of these places, a lot of these deep, clear lakes, they, they seem like they do have big males, like a lot of them do. You remember where that bed was? Yeah, I think it's that this. because there's one right there, too. There's oh, yeah. One. It was that one? Yeah, because it had that little sand patch there, that's and right. then it came yep. out and split. Oh, yeah, I see them. Yeah. Let's look it up there, too. Oh, just to the left of that. You see him sitting there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where it is. They they got kind of like more of a... Oh, and I go in the same spot. Yeah. I'm going to see what it does. Yeah, just let it see. I'm going to give it a second. I did catch a lot this week like that. Where, where ones that you pull up and be like, wow, that fish isn't even near the bed. <laughs> There's no way. But I was just so desperate that... You know, I'd pull up and I was like, you know, the bed would be here, the fish would be 10 feet over here, and I'd just, I'd pitch over to it, and like two of the fishes weak. That caught them 10 feet off of it. <laughs> it, was, it was just, it was just, you know, it was just one of them weeks. No, he, he was just hanging out. Drop it right on him. A little bit to your left. There you go, let's see.
right, and then just barely bump it towards us. Just kind of. All right, oh, let it sit. See how she turned like that? Yep. Just let her, let her come back to it. Just, you just gotta be patient. She'll mm -hmm. come right back, and then, and then you'll bump it again. As soon as she gets back in her spot. All right, she's back right there. there. Bump it again. Okay. Wait a second. Bump it again. It's looking, she's looking right at it. Bump it. Keep shaking it. Shake it a little bit. Shake it a little more. Shake it a little more. A little bit harder. Shake, shake, shake. Yeah. Shake it a little more. There you go. Keep doing it. She's turning. Come on. Keep shaking. Shake it. Shake it. Big old shake. sassy thing. Shake it. Shake it. She's going to get it. Shake it. Shake it harder. <laughs> Shake it harder. Oh, she's fine. Oh, come, come on. on. Just eat it already. All right, throw it back up there. It's, it's, or this could be a good learning opportunity, and you show us how it's done. Uh, no, you do this one first. Okay. Because this one, you got this one. I already see. I think you got this one. All right, you, all right, you just reel that one back in. Oh, it was that terrible? Well, no, actually, he's gonna go eat it. Hold on. <laughs> see the see where the sweet spot is. See where that little yeah, log right is on that across? yeah. It's right on the other side of that log. I got you. So once you once your bait hits that that sweet area, it should, it'll eat I'm gonna I'm gonna reel it. In. Yeah, reel it back. I'm gonna reel it. In. It's about six inches to the left of that. That's like kind of left more, a little more. Right like, there, right there, right there. Right Let's, there. Yeah, yeah. Now, is this about how far you had to stay from the fish this week? I mean, would they get, how spooky would they get? Some, I had to stay as far as I possibly could where I could just barely see them. Mm -hmm. And then others, I mean, I, I would go over them and I'd be like, oh, there's one, and I'd drop it on them and catch them. I mean, it was just, <laughs> it, it, it was just really a, a mixture of everything. That guy's oh, oh, did it have it? Yeah. <laughs> there, put it back in there. That's definitely the spot. See, it's yep. right on the other side of that log. The, the the bed's actually there to the right, and, but the, the the area you want to hit's right on the other side of that log. Between, because there's that gap between that log and the sand, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Actually, or I right guess where we're kind of staying. Yeah. Right. Like right. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Dude, that one, like, I mean, would a lot of them thump it like that, too, or would they grab yeah, it? That one was pretty aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, that was a, a lot of them didn't go up like that. That one there was just like. Yeah, I mean, when it, it when it made its mind up, I mean, it thunk. Yeah. I think it's just kind of fun watching John Cox with a spinning rod, <laughs> to be 100% honest with you. I'm telling you. Right in the beak. I mean, that's not really like what we were looking for this week, but that was a good run through on it, you know, yeah. how those fish would react mm -hmm. on the bed and yeah. shh, even I can make it look easy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it back. Good job. John, I need a new bait and we're tangled. And we're tangled. <laughs> <laughs> That's how my week went. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on uh, Monday night after I, I practiced Sunday, I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? This water's really clear. Um, saw a lot of really spooky fish on beds. I was like, you know, I probably need to build a spinning rod up, you know, to use it. <laughs> you didn't even have one with you? No, I didn't even have one. So, <laughs> so you know, I had the blank with me and everything and all the, all the pieces, you know, because I stopped by Mud Hole um, before I left, you know, and just got them just in case. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so I got in my room, I, I built a spinning rod, I got it all ready to go, and, uh, you know, while I was doing that, I was thinking, you know, when's the last time I really caught fish on a spinning rod? And then I realized when I won at Red River, <laughs> and I was like, geez, you know, so, so I mean, I was really comfortable with it mm -hmm. all week, and, uh, 
you know, it just it brought actually brought back a lot of memories, and <laughs> as you know, I had a lot of the same feelings as I did when I was at Red River. Well, I guess you do look surprisingly comfortable with the spinning rod, um, but I mean, like these things are pretty dope. Walk us through, um, you know, just the whole setup. Like, why why did you choose what you did? Uh, well, what I did, I took um. I use MHX blanks, and I and I, I took a seven foot. Uh, it's a two power, so you know it, it's a um, an eight forty two, and uh, so because I want a I want a rod that's you know got enough power uh, in this section yep. to get a good hook, but and then and then you know the rest of the rod will really be uh, parabolic and really bend well. So pretty much once you get the hook in the fish, I mean you got them. Yeah, they're stuck. As long as you let it pull drag, mm -hmm. you, you got them. I mean it's you know. Because the rod bends real well and stuff, and um, you know, and that's pretty much uh, how I decided to pick those blanks. What size fluorocarbon leader were you running? Uh, I was using ten fluorocarbon on the on the whole. Thing. And then we had braid then, on the uh, main line. Yeah, and I was using a ten pound uh, uh, some kind of fire line. And that's just you wanted the sensitivity, castability. Yeah, I'm trying to eliminate the the wind knots, you know. Sure. And that even though I got them, like, <laughs> even with this line, I got them. Yep. But, a lot during the day, but uh, you know, it just uh, I feel like you get a little better hook in them, you know. And yeah. It just you know, I like using braids, so I just you know feel more comfortable with it. Yeah, it makes sense. Size hook too. What about the hook? Oh, and the hook and um, the bait. We, I, was, I was honestly we were using we used the same hook when I shot her fish, and it's like a, oh no uh, kidding yeah it's a one uh, um finesse wide gap. Okay. And that's yeah. Actually, you know. You know, when, when I do my shiner trips, that's what we use. We hook our shiners on with that, and <laughs> you know, and we and we use them on some of the same kind of spinning rods, you know. And oh, cool. Uh, yeah, so it's you know, it's a pretty neat setup. And then we just ran a Yamamoto Sanko. That's it, right? That's it. Pretty straightforward. <laughs> no, <laughs> no need to get fancy with no, it. No, not at all. <laughs> you just got to get it in front of one. Yep, that's it. Get it in front of them, and they'll eat it. John, you had a. You know, sight fishing really carried you through the bulk of this tournament, but it was kind of cool the, the decision you made for the final day uh, to completely switch gears and go fish dirty water that really, um, I mean, that's kind of what sealed the deal for you, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, you know, it was all sight fishing the first three days, and that, and that you know, what got me to the last day. And, and it's so hard to change that last day and just completely, you know, and that, and that, you know, and it was just hard to do, but I just knew that, hey, I need to do this because I knew the, sight fishing thing just wasn't gonna last. Well I tell you what, I mean we've kind of we've covered your sight fishing deal I think wonderfully. Mm -hmm. Let's uh let's go take a look at how you caught them in the dirty water. Alright that sounds good. Let's, let's go. Hi John a little different scenery uh where we're currently at. Uh just kind of tell us about what it is about the dirty water why the stark contrast in your game plan. You know uh you know the start of the week you know we were doing the sight fishing stuff and we started to get the front coming through. We were getting windy conditions, cloud cover, a little bit of rain. Um, that's when I decided to go to the dirty water. Just okay. because you know I knew the sight fishing was going to be hard to to see them, and I just you know wanted to just go to an area where I could put my head down and feel comfortable and fish. And it, it's not like there's really anything um, specific, right? I mean, you fish everything. Yeah, I, I threw out everything, and, and you know, in that day in particular, it was. It was all in random stuff. You know, I'd pull up, you know, to a, a stick that was all isolated by itself, catch one, or you know, and then I and then I'd go into an actual cove and catch one in the ditch, and then I even caught one off, you know, uh, one stick up that was out in the middle of, of the lake, you know, and um, you know, it's just that everything was so random that yeah. day. But I just just fished, kept the bait in the water, kept my head down, you know, didn't spend all that time running. And, and it, something too, I mean, obviously the final day you spent you know, the very vast majority of your time in dirty water, you know, fishing wood and stuff like that. You did run there um, during the event too, when we got a little cloud cover on day three, I think it was? Yep, it was. Day yeah. three? Yeah, day three, it clouded up. I was having really trouble seeing them. I was like, all right, dirty water bike's gonna probably be my best mm -hmm. chance of catching anything. And uh, <laughs> we ran all the way back to that dirty water, got back there and the sun popped out. Yep. And it was like, Okay, we can see him now. Let's go back to the bed fishing. <laughs> but before the sun popped out, the really interesting thing, at least to me, is I, 20 casts in, you had a big one roll up I on did. your jig. Yeah, it was like a, it was, as soon as we got in there, conditions were perfect. Had a big bite, it didn't get it, missed it, and uh, you know, and then I was like, all right, we're gonna whack him, and then the sun came out, and it just 
They killed it, you know, killed so the bite. It's one of those things where it's more, um, I mean, you're not going to pull up in here and catch 80 fish. You're going to pull up in here and catch some quality ones? Yeah, I mean, you're, I came to the dirty water to, you know, to fish for five bites pretty mm -hmm. much. I mean, that's what I did. And I mean, the last day, I, I think I got seven bites, you know, and it's just, you know, that's what you do. You don't get a lot of bites, but you can get some decent ones. Well, uh, you know, while we're kind of working on this edge here, mm -hmm. just talk us through, um, you know, the setup you used um, for the chatterbait. Well, you know, when I was throwing the chatterbait, I'm using the new Elite Series Pro MHX rod. It's a, it, it's an 86 medium heavy. Um, it's, you know, it's got, it's got, I mean, it's just got the perfect bend you'd want for that chatterbait. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a crankbait rod, but it has enough backbone to really drive the hook into them. Yeah, because there's some gnarly stuff in mm -hmm. here. Too. Oh yeah, there's some thick stuff. But I'm just, I'm throwing on 15 pound fluorocarbon and, um, you know, just pretty much chunking it out and just slow cranking it by stuff. And, and every once in a while, I'll maybe kill it some and let it sink. And um, that's about it. Just kept this in my hand. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, pretty this much. This is more John Cox. This is what I like. To yeah. I, I mean, but honestly, like, I love to sight fish. And I, it, we just never have any events where it's calm and the sun's out. Mm -hmm. We never do. That, that was the yeah, first time. Yeah, the in weather five never years. plays. Yeah. So, I mean. It was just uh, great conditions. <laughs> <laughs> well, hurry up and catch me one. All right, man. Let's see if we can't catch one. <laughs> oh, just had one. Whoa. Jeez. You want me to catch well, you it know, for you? One of the best things on the final day was we were allowed to use our own boat. And, uh, you know, that, that was really nice, not having to change boats, you know, and being able to, you know, use our own stuff. And um, got to use the crest liner there. And, uh, you know, just I just feel comfortable in it, you know, and it uh, just really helped. You know, that's just one last thing you have to worry about on the final. Oh day. yeah. Was, oh, I'm actually. Dude, getting, you're getting bumped. Getting some bumps in here. Where's your chatterbait at? <laughs> <laughs> you left it in your truck. <laughs> Dude's got 20 rods sitting in his front seat. <laughs> and I bring three. Here's a spinning rod. <laughs> 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 oh, thanks, John. You're yeah. so nice. That <laughs> yeah. yeah, makes rods for a living. Can't even loan me a bait caster. <laughs> oh, that was the trunk I was like, oh man, they're schooling again. Yeah. Where are they busting at? How deep is it? Most of the stuff. A couple about feet. Three feet. Is that about? I mean. Was there any like ditches or anything you you hit at all? Because there, uh, there's some drains. Yeah, and stuff I mean there that was. Yeah, and, that, and that's what it was. I mean, you know, I caught some on some points and some coves, and then I did. I caught uh, one of my better ones out of an actual drain. You know, where the cove would come out, and I actually uh, was in the back of the cove throwing to the bank, and then I just fired one right out down the middle, and uh, and really slow cranked it along the bottom there. It was probably you know six seven feet in that drain. Okay. This just looks like big fish water, though. Yeah, that's what, and that's why I like fishing. I just, you know, you just feel like any throw, you know. It's like when you used to watch uh, Jimmy Houston back in the day throw the big <laughs> spinner bait, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Water. I mean, that's what I that comes to my mind. Him and Bill Dance always catching them giants out of this mm -hmm. stuff. Hey, we're up here. We're coming up to a drain. Why don't you uh, try to throw this chatter bait up in there? See if you can't get one. I'll show you. This place I've been getting a big one. Right out in front here? Yeah, right out here. It just kind of comes out of this creek and just runs right to the boat to where we're at right here. Well, I mean, that gone. Everybody, he does know how to use a bait caster. <laughs> Dude, one. this thing does have a really nice... <laughs> oh, like, it's amazing. Real tight. Mm -hmm. Those rods pretty sweet. I think the reason you can feel that is because that new uh, Elite Pro Series blank. It, uh, Dude, this is actually the first uh, MHX blank I've got a, well, I mean, other than the spinning rod, mm -hmm. but I mean, this is the first time throwing them around. I hear you talk about them. Yeah. It's nice. It's smooth. And wait till you get a bite here and you feel how smooth it, when it pulls the drag out, feels coming off the guides. That's what, that's what you get when you space the guides perfectly so the line never touches the blank. When, when you're fighting that fish and you got all that pressure on it, it, can, it, it just pulls drag perfectly smooth off the rod and there's no friction. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, going to catch one. There's kind of like, there's not like a lot of junk on the bottom, mm -mm. but there's like well, random little. 
little like, sticks here yeah. and there. Yeah. And you know, uh, two years ago when we came here, there was so much more of it. Oh, there okay. Was, oh, yeah. there was a ton. But since this year, we had such high water. I mean, yeah, look everything. at the watermark on yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, since it's been so high and, and all winter, none of that stuff was able to grow. So a lot of it died off from being underwater for so long. That ditch, that ditch runs straight through here. Yeah, it comes so out here. So when you're slow cranking it through there. Oh, oh, dude. You got her? Yeah. Get out. Oh, she's coming up. Oh, oh my, my gosh. Goodness. Look at the size of this fish. Oh my gosh. I thought you said they don't bite when it's oh sunny. Oh my gosh. I guess they do oh, no, bite no, no, when it's no, no, sunny. No, 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 no. Bring her to me. Get this one in. Oh Dude. my gosh. Oh. Look at the size of this one. Oh, oh you. Oh. 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 Bring, bring her, her back here. around. Bring her back around. Oh. Oh. Oh, God. oh, God. oh my gosh. Look at, Look that, at thing. that thing. Look at that thing. The thing is huge. Gosh, I didn't, I didn't girl? catch any of that size this whole week. <laughs> Man. Dude. Awesome job. See? I just got to go fishing with John Cox and I'll catch a big one. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Man. Oh, dude. What a day. Heck yeah, man. Man. You know that? This thing here is like such, it's a perfect two prong approach for spring fishing. You got bend fish. You know, you kind of have all conditions covered. You can come play, mm -hmm. get your big bites. <sighs> Dude. Yeah, this place is amazing. You can do anything you want. You can fish dirty water, clear water, deep, shallow. Docks, I love it. Whatever you want. Let's get her back, huh? Awesome. I'll see you Go eat some stuff. <laughs> well, John. Thanks a lot, dude, for, for coming out, you know, the day after the tournament, you know, taking some time to hang out with us. Show us, you know, both your deals, your sight fishing thing, and, and the dirty water pattern, you know, that you switched up to on the final day. Um, super cool. I know I learned a lot. I hope everyone else learned a lot. And, uh, dude, it was a blast, man. Yeah, I really I, appreciate it. I had a blast coming out with you guys, too. I mean, this is awesome. Good day out here. And uh, I just love coming to this place. I hope we come back again soon. And, uh, you know, just got to thank all my sponsors for having me here. I mean, without them, you know. Absolutely. Uh, my family and friends and everybody following me on Facebook. My kids putting up with me leaving all the time. I mean, it's just, <laughs> you know, it's just been amazing.